I know you love Corvette videos, so here's another one. You guys might recognize this car. This is the uh, 1982 Corvette that I had to pull the entire transmission out to get it to stop leaking. Luckily for me, it is no longer leaking, but it has another issue. So the customer drove it home, drove it around for a couple days, and then all of a sudden it did not want to start. So we're going to diagnose it cranks, but it has no start. So with the crossfire, it can be a little challenging, but we're going to go back to the basics. So obviously things need spark and fuel in order to run. So we're going to take this off. We're going to see what happens when we turn the key. All right, here are twin throttle bodies from the beloved crossfire injection. So when the key is turned, these should prime and you should actually see gas spraying out of each one of these things just for a little bit. Um, we're going to start with diagnosing fuel, make sure it's getting fuel. Let's see what happens. Okay, keys on. Nothing. Nothing, not a single thing of gas. So, there is no fuel. So we're getting no fuel to the injectors, so that's going to either be a fuse, a relay, or a fuel pump. So we're going to remove this, we're going to get access to the fuel pump, and check it out. With everything removed, you can see here is the lead to the uh, sender. This sender is actually new, so with it being new, that just tells me that's usually the problem. <laughs> The last thing somebody touched is the problem, but what we can do is we can jumper, um, we can get our test light out and we can see if we actually get power to the fuel pump with the ignition on. That will be our next step in diagnosing this. If we get power here, that means the fuse and the relay are both good. So we're gonna make, we made a simple circuit with our test light basically ground to ground, power to power, and we're gonna turn the key, and if the test light lights up while we're cranking, then we know that we have power to the pump, and we know that our relay and our fuse are all good. Make sure these two leads do not touch each other, because that would be a bad thing. So we'll go with the key on. We have power. We have just a little bit of power. We do have power with the uh, key turning, but not much. All right, <clears throat> all the bolts are out. I use a combination of my impact, but also a little driver because these top three, you really can't get from the top. Usually you can, I don't know why this tank shifted up. Anyway, another thing I noticed was these fuel lines, at least this main one had been leaking. They probably should be replaced. They probably should have been replaced when the center was done last time, but they weren't. But I mean, you look at them there. They're coming apart, they're fraying. Let's get new ones. Won't take much extra time to do. But we can pull this out. We can see what we're working with. Maybe. The other problem we have is this gas tank is completely full. <laughs> like completely full. So basically you rotate it 180 degrees and it should come out. So we're gonna let this, we're gonna let this kind of sit outside and drain just a little bit. So here's our old fuel pump. I don't think it's that old. I mean, maybe a year, but it doesn't have any markings on it. So who knows really how old it is. We're gonna remove it, and we're gonna put the new one in.
Right, there's a new pump in. We're just going to run it for a little bit. We're not going to run it for a lot. Make sure it makes noise, that's all. Yep, it's making noise. It's working. I'm going to turn the key to on. You guys ready? You see it kind of move? So I'm not going to run it very long because I don't want to, you know, these pumps need to have liquid in them. but. It works now. We're going to replace these hoses. We're going to put it in. We're going to see if this car will come back to life. So to remove some hose clamps on these little bitty pieces of hose, your best bet is a ratcheting quarter inch wrench. It's really the only thing that you're going to be able to fit in there. You can't really fit a screwdriver. I was using this, but the way the clamp is pointed, it's not going to work. So a variety of tools will help you get these uh, pieces of hose off. And then when you get them off, I like to use a razor blade and just split them down the middle and they will come off a lot easier that way. Well, I'm glad GM is using quality hose back in the day. Interesting fact, it looks like there's three different ones, but cool, look at this. October 9th, 1981, 516's hose by Gates. Good job, GM. And this one has GM quarter inch on it, and then, I don't know about this one. Oh, well, it says 3H GM right there. You can't see that. Anyway, yeah, original hoses. Let's replace those when you replace the sending unit. What a great idea. All right, new pump is in, lines are on, sender's installed. We're going to turn the key and see what happens. And let's see what happens. There we go. He's alive. Fuel is good. Make sure we're not leaking. We look good. All right. Well, there you go. Fuel pumps. Get a Delphi. Delphi whatever you call it, not a made in China one, and maybe it'll last for a couple years, longer than just one. So, there it is, quick video, this 82 is now back on the road.